and welcome to RF Design Tutorials, a brand new video tutorial playlist on my YouTube channel. This is tutorial one. And in this tutorial, we will talk about doing patch antenna design and simulation in areas. Before we get started, just a gentle reminder. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. And once you subscribe, click on the bell icon to enable all the notification. After watching the video, if you like it, give, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues who may be interested in watching similar tutorial. Now, let's get started. So what you will learn in next few minutes, which in this video will be approximately 12 to 15 minutes, we will talk about how to design an inset fed patch antenna, how to draw this patch antenna layout in ADS, perform a full 3D FEM simulation and thus understand the key settings required for an accurate EM or FEM simulation. More importantly so, because this is the big gap um, which most of the videos don't talk about, is to understand the reason or discrepancy between your theoretical calculations and simulation. And usually if you have done few simulations before yourself, you know whatever you calculate when you run simulation, there's always a difference between what you thought will happen and what eventually simulation throws up. So we'll talk about that. And we will also talk about how to correct that discrepancy between theory and simulation so that you can achieve a first pass success. After that, we will look at 3D far field gain plots and generated 2D pattern cuts, as well as look at how to plot antenna parameters versus frequency. Hopefully exciting enough. So let's get started and stay tuned till the end of this video to enhance your learning. Right, to start with inset fit microstep patch antenna, it's one of the very simple geometries to design and the description here shows you all the key parameters of that patch antenna. I also provide the equations which you could use to calculate these dimensions and I have found these equations to be very, very accurate over some of the other equations available in various uh, references. Now we have done a sample calculation for 2.4 gigahertz and we are using 62 mil FR4 substrate, which is a very common material used by a lot of people. Now, when we apply these formulas for 2.4 gigahertz resonant frequency, these are the parameters we arrive at. Using these parameters is very simple for us to calculate the coordinates of X and Y of all these vertex point, keeping one point as the origin. So for these coordinates, I have kept this point as the origin and then I went ahead and calculated. Now, once you have these coordinates, your job is very simple. Just go back to ADS layout and start drawing your antenna. And there are a few ways to do that. So let's look at that. So once I have this patch antenna already drawn using some of these coordinates, so let me go ahead and delete that. And let's look at fish. Now, various ways of drawing the patch antenna, you could use this polygon. And once you have the polygon, you can use insert coordinate entry. And you start entering the coordinates which you just calculated for example x0 y0 and you can see one point got anchored then you go to different x and y coordinate and you keep following the coordinate table which you have calculated just now uh, within ads uh, design and you can keep drawing for example as you can see i'm moving with these coordinates uh, then if i follow i'll finish all the all the patch um, geometry other ways, when you already have the coordinates calculated and you could have a simple text file with this coordinates, I can use this command AP and with this AP command, I can just use a very simple technique in ADS. So let me copy this. And here is the layout command line editor prompt and it has a field. I can just copy paste that command here. So AP is a command in ADS to add a polygon. And if I press enter, it draws my antenna geometry using the coordinates which I have passed here. And there are many functions you could access using this command line editor. If you refer to this help here, it shows all the, all the commands which you could use in ADS for editing, other functions, as well as some preference settings. So you could go ahead and explore. Now you must be wondering, you are not seeing this toolbar, so how do you activate it? Well, to activate it, you can go to ADS main window, go to tools, app manager, and switch on this layout command line editor. Once you enable it and close, it will um, you know, force you to restart ADS. And once you restart ADS, 
you open your layout, you will have this window here. And again, this is a dockable window. You can leave it there or you can place it at the bottom or side, wherever you prefer. So you can make your way through. Now, once I have this, um, you know, antenna geometry, and you can notice this antenna geometry is without a feed line because this is how I, you know, calculate the coordinates, but you can have different ways of cal calculating coordinates and you can add a feed line. Now to insert a feed line, I can simply take this edge here. So I just drew a rectangle and selected these two corners. Let me show that again. And once I have that um, edge selected, I can go to this command line editor and type a command dy, which is shift in y and enter minus 10. That means I want to shift this edge in y direction by minus 10. And when I press enter, you can see the, you know, the edge gets shifted. So simple. And if you already knew it, it's good. If not, now you know the one thing to manipulate geometry in ADS. All right, so let's get started. So once I have the patch antenna geometry, rest of the stuff is very common um, or, or similar the way we learned about EM simulation. So I'll place a pin at the midpoint of this feed line. I'll go to port editor and I can choose the type of calibration. And by default, you can see the feed type is auto. That means uh, there may not be any calibration. So I'll go ahead and switch on TML calibration, which is like a waveguide port. Uh, for our 3D simulation, it's fully calibrated port. And once we have this, I have already created a EM setup uh, for you here. It's very similar to what we learned in FEM tutorial video. If you haven't watched that, I would recommend to go ahead and watch the FEM tutorial video. I set the frequency plan as adaptive sweep from 2 to 3 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz as a single point because I definitely want to have the results stored. So I will explain some of these settings, but let me go ahead and click on simulate so that simulation gets started and we talk about some of these settings. In output plan, I have enabled the option to save field for all generated frequencies. If you have didn't enable this, then you can't see the far field of the antenna. So important enough to, to activate. Under options in physical model, in antenna kind of geometry, we always recommend you to give at least a half wavelength lateral extension so that you have sufficient space around antenna to compute the, the fields or let the fields radiate from the geometry. Our patch currently is an, you know, 29.2 mm approximately. So I kept a 30 mm kind of lateral extension. In vertical extension, it is the same concept, 10 times the dielectric height roughly. So it's uh, around 1.6 mm is my dielectric. I kept 15 and the open boundary condition, which is absorbing boundary condition. So while we were talking, you can see FEM, FEM ran quite quickly and uh, it took approximately 47 seconds to run, which is very respectable for a full 3D EM simulation. We'll come to this results in a while. Just let me complete one more uh, setting description. Under mesh, um, under uh, initial mesh, as we talked about in one of the earlier videos, I enabled the fixed edge mesh and kept 0.8 mm because my feed line width is around 2.9 mm. So that gives me one third of that. So simple settings. And remember, if you want to generate an EM model after a simulation and so that you could design a matching network of this antenna, which we'll talk about in one of the videos in this tutorial uh, when we go along. Uh, Make sure you, you deselect it, but right now I didn't want it to create any EM models, so I have it selected so that some of my hard disk space is saved. Now, once the simulation results is done, let, let's go ahead and look at the simulation result. And here notice if I place a marker, I wanted this antenna to be resonant around 2.4 gigahertz, but what you can notice, the response shifted by around 40 megahertz on the lower side. Doesn't it sound very familiar to you guys? If you do your own you know, mathematical calculation, you run simulation, a lot of time you see this. You wanted something on the higher and the response shifts to lower side. The big question is why and how to resolve it. Here is the answer. Most of these structures, especially the radiating structures or the coupled structures, you know, the calculation formulas we use often underestimates or ignores the fringing field effects to simplify this formula for our calculation. And this is the reason why the design thing is always bigger than actually what you designed for. 
and roughly based on my experience it's one to two percent of inaccuracy in your results and the physical dimension so what i mean by that if especially if you're a newcomer 29.14 which is supposed to be lambda by two at your design frequency actually is more than lambda by two and that's why you see the response shifted to the frequency which which is basically half wavelength long so what it means to how to correct for that the way to correct this problem is to to look at your uh, you know geometry and squeeze this geometry by one percent or two percent right so how do we do that so if you calculate uh, around one percent of 229.2 mm is around 0.3 mm so i'll go a little higher and then that between accuracy inaccuracy is around between one to two percent so i'll go ahead and take 15 1.5 percent in between right so i'll take these two corners and i will shift this dy minus 0.4 which is roughly 15 percent and if i press enter you can see this edge gets shifted by that amount similarly on these two edge i will use a command dx which is uh, you know uh, delta in x and i will give plus 0.2 because i want to apply half on this edge and half on that edge so that the structure is symmetrical and then i will pick these two corners and i just enter minus because now i want to go into minus x direction and now i have squeezed this geometry by that amount so with this done let's save our design and let's start the simulation and it will override the earlier simulation result now in order to see these two graphs i will go ahead and switch on the history so that i can compare the two responses there so we'll wait for the simulation to finish and then we will talk about the comparison and whether my my thought or claim got validated or not so it will take around 40 seconds to to simulate so we'll pause the video here and then we'll come back to this video as soon as the simulation is done okay now you can see the simulation is finished and we can exp we can see the expected frequency shift on the higher side because we reduce the geometry if we just zoom in to this graph around this area we can notice uh, the now new resonant frequency is very close to 2.4 gigahertz and i just rounded off my percentage calculation if i would have gone by 0.45 or something i would have hit the 2.4 but not that bad i already have the results which i was expecting for and let's auto scale the plot again and switch off the history so now once i have the desired patch antenna result i can go back to the layout and click on this far field plot and i can go ahead and generate a far field pattern so areas will go ahead and calculate the far field on all the frequencies it has simulated your results for and it will open this far field viewer which you have already seen if you watched one of my earlier videos but here we'll talk about something slightly different in the solution setup we can select from the list of frequency on which frequency we would like to see the far field so here i selected 2.4 gigahertz under plot properties in far field tab i can click on antenna parameter and it gives you a snapshot of all the all relevant antenna parameters such as gain directivity um, you know radiated power and so on and so forth now if you want to see the these antenna parameters versus frequency we can click on this button here and this will generate a data display and here you can see gain versus frequency efficiency versus frequency don't worry about these plots because this is just type of trace we can double click on this arrow and select the trace type to be linear and now we have the linear looking plot of you know gain versus frequency and we can do the same thing for for rest of the plots now another thing which usually antenna designers do is to extract cut so if i just use this arrow button here and go to far field cut enable the far field cut and now i can enable you know any theta any phi for example i can look at you know phi and you can see the the cut line there if i go back to solution and select the frequency of 2.4 gigahertz and now i can display this cut into data display so it will extract the far field cut and you can notice all the relevant parameters you gain directivity radiation intensity e field h field polarization data axial ratio and so on and so forth and it also gives you a table of max directivity max gain and the direction in which the max gain is and so on 
So all the relevant parameters at your fingertips. So this is all about our first tutorial in this series talking about how to design inset fit micro step patch antenna and we covered all the points which we originally set out for. That's all for this video. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you like the video and spread the word in the design community you know. Thanks a lot for your time.